Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm a legend joined by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. And today we're here at the Columbus Zoo. I've heard nothing but really good things about this zoo. I've never been here before, so I'm very excited. In this video here, we're gonna show you all around the zoo, everything there is to do, all the animals, all the exhibits. Let's go check it out. Let's kick off the tour of the zoo with Adventure Cove, which is the brand new area that just opened up last month. Here you can see one of the main attractions here is sea lions. We've got a very large new exhibit, very modern. I'm sure the water is green because that's probably just how they live. Yeah. But uh, very fancy exhibit. So you can see now we're in an indoor section of the new Adventure Cove and it is, uh, it's really cool. I can see why this was such an expensive exhibit. I believe it cost the zoo around, I think it cost the zoo around $40 million or so. And uh, really neat. Also, not normally how you would see sea lions normally displayed either. Yeah, no, not at all. So the middle section is really neat because you're surrounded on all sides by water. So if the, uh, the sea lions wanted to, they could go underneath you, to the sides, up above. Very, very innovative. They also have above ground viewing where you can see the seals and sea lions. And you can see them sort of hanging out over there. Now that tunnel we showed you, like that 360 tunnel, you can see the outline of that right there. Looks like there's two halves to the exhibit, one on this side, and then one over there on that side. One part of Adventure Cove that's not up and running yet is that they have a stage, so I imagine they're gonna do shows with the seals and the sea lions. Also part of the new expansion is Jack Hanna's Animal Encounter Village. Let's go see what's inside here. It feels really new. Yes. So the first animal you get to in the Animal Encounter Village is a pair of sleepy little cheetahs. Now these are definitely younger cheetahs. As they don't have a, a very large exhibit, but you could tell they are very young. Here you can see an animal Molly loves. Oh, I that, see. The bat-eared fox. They're so cute. They're Especially with the ears parked up. Mm -hmm. But their exhibit is done up like a little park, including a fountain. And they're sleeping on the picnic blanket. And here's one of my favorite animals, the penguin. Little African penguins. All hanging out right by the glass. And their exhibit is done up like a uh, pier. Right next to those guys is this fun looking bird. I saw his name on the sign, but I have forgotten it. But really neat looking. And I love how his, he like can look at the bat-eared foxes as well. And that's what he's doing right now. I like how so one of the guest chefs is an animal I've never heard of before. Garnett's Greater Galago. And you can see him on top of the pots and pans. Yeah, we've been to a lot of zoos and I don't think I've no, ever, never, never seen heard of that. Yeah. Oh man, right there is a prehensile tail porcupine. These are wonderful animals. I know, we're, we're big fans of the Cincinnati Zoo. And of course, Rico, one of their social media superstars, is a prehensile tail porcupine. I love their nose. You can't see it. I love that. Over there, chewing on his own tail. That's a striped skunk. Oh, look at his little hands. Oh. These guys are really cool when they're behind glass and you wouldn't have to do the smelling part. And last but not least, in the garden store, you've got a couple of macaws. Aww. Back outside now, and you can see the it's bath time for the capybaras. And these are little capybaras, too. These are not definitely not full-grown ones. Oh, he's rolling around. And uh, they're enjoying a swim. Yeah, this, this is really neat. Normally you don't see a lot of these guys together, too. No. You're curious what they look like out of the water. That's it. Really cool. Oh, awesome. This sleepy guy here is a Red River hog. We are now inside of Stingray Bay. And you can come in and pet the stingrays for free. You can also feed them for $3. If you've never fitted a stingray before, it is like the weirdest feeling. They kind of like vacuum it out of your hand. But nice that you could just come in here and look around. Yeah, definitely. They also have a large gift shop where you can buy the food. So I missed this one. I was too distracted by the capybaras. 
but there's a Linneman's two-toed sloth hanging out in this exhibit as well. He was yachting. That's a, that's a pretty good duo of animals, sloths and capybaras in one exhibit. You can't walk through it today, but they do have a garden area with a couple of different types of turtles in here. This guy's posing for us. Here you can see a couple of very pretty toucans. The tortoises. And tortoises. Ooh, hopping around. And there you can see the, the tortoise down there in the bottom. Don't forget them. Got a couple of lemurs hanging out underneath this bench. The red rough lemur looks very tired. The ring-tailed lemur, not quite as tired. Oh, yes! The last animal over here is going to be this hornbill. We just saw him hop a minute ago. Yeah. I would love if he would hop into his little swing. <laughs> I mean, there's a blanket there, so he'd probably like to sit on it. Yeah. Molly, I think this next exhibit is going to be a good one. Because up next is the polar frontier. Bears! And there are the polar bears. They're hanging out in the water. That one over there is definitely a much smaller polar bear. Oh my gosh. And the, uh, the exhibit, very big. Yeah. Giant. Oh. So the little one, nine months old. And Molly, you're getting a little, little show over there. He's scratching himself. Yeah, or she, I Aww. This is wonderful. He's already a little over half the size of mom. Hmm. Look at the size of this brown bear. It's a brown bear. He is uh, really posing for us up on the rock, too. Uh, he is. Look at his lips. Oh my God. Sure, yeah, probably getting some good smells. Nice little breeze up there. That is a very large animal. So when we saw these two polar bears hanging out, they were hanging out on top of this glass tunnel here, which would be a really great place to see them swim. And one thing I love also is that they have like live streams so that if you're down here, you can see if the bears are playing upstairs. Just another view of the big grizzly bear as uh, we got to see him from the outside area as well. And we're closer to him now. And he's still massive. Yeah. Guys, quick correction. That posing bear was a different posing bear than the posing bear we saw before. Both very large. Oh, he's scratching adorably. Wow. Look at the little Arctic foxes. I'm guessing they're young too, because normally these guys are, uh, they're all, I believe they're normally white. Can we take one of home? Uh, I don't know if we can fit in the, in the backpack. Yeah, we, we are backpack? flying on Spirit Airlines, we only got that backpack. If you want to get rid of all your clothes. I'll do it. Yep. The polar bear area is also home to this adorable playground. This is pretty awesome as well. Uh, there's an ice bear outpost, which is kind of like this science museum -y area all about the Arctic. Complete with some interactives and uh, little play areas for the kids. And then it would take you over to the polar bear viewing we saw earlier. The next exhibit up is the Heart of Africa. Be My friends, there's the uh, the business end of the camel. Pretty close to us, probably about a good six feet away. Then you can see a different camel right there. So as you enter the African area, they have this wonderful bench with Jack Hanna and I'm guessing his wife on it. Mm -hmm. Or daughter, I'm not sure. Probably wife. But a very, uh, very Disney-esque. Like a very reminiscent of like Roy's bench at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Except Roy does not have a penguin in his arm. Yeah. I guess he's got Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse? Minnie, Minnie Mouse, Minnie. yeah. I would take the penguin over Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Here you can see the king of the jungle, a lion, doing what it does best, sleeping. He's been doing what it does best, what it does all the time. Well, I will her? say, um, this one is sleeping on the wing of an airplane. Yeah, that's cool. 
So this view here is one of the first things that greets you in the African area. And it is uh, stunning. I, I can't imagine how many acres this thing is. But it, um, I've been to a lot of zoos and things outside of like going to a very, very large drive through safari. Uh, I've never seen an African prince in a zoo exhibit this big. Um, just pointing out some of the animals that I could see from this. I mentioned there's a lot of vantage points for this area. But you can see a number of ostriches over there. How many African safaris besides Kilimanjaro have you been on? We went to the one in Alabama. Oh, well, this car safari. Well, that's what I was talking about, because generally those are very large. Yeah, I guess. Um, you can see some African crown cranes as well. I believe there's some zebras and wildebeest. I'm sorry for the the super zoom pan there, but some zebras and wildebeest over there in the background as well. But uh, giant. this view is spectacular. So that lioness we saw, there are three of them and they're all lying on the wing of the airplane. Love the pose of this one here, like right with the paw against the glass. And it looks like during uh, times when there's not an ongoing global health situation, you could climb in to that airplane we saw and we've been talking about and get a really good view up close of those lions. Here you can see the zoo's hyenas, including, I don't know if I've ever seen a hyena in the water, like this guy is here. And the hyenas have lots and lots of room. Yeah. Oh, he's getting out of the water. There are two hyenas in here? Oh, he's got a stick. And he's happily running away. Mm -hmm. The African area does have cheetahs as well. And they do run the cheetahs a couple times a day. So for three dollars, you can feed the giraffe. You are going to get lettuce out of two baskets. It's so cool looking like right in the eye. It is really cool. Uh, Giant tub. Giant You also get a very good view of the Santa. All right, make sure you get that one big leaf at a time, and we just ask that. So after feeding a giraffe, I wouldn't think there are animals down here, but if you look down there, I believe it's Molly. Is it African guinea fowl? Yep. Uh, yeah. Which are really fun-looking birds. Right outside of the vervet monkey is Jack's tent, which is very, very reminiscent of the one that Jack Hanna would use when he was doing his show at Bush Gardens, Tampa. But unfortunately today, I believe all those monkeys are back in their indoor house because the, uh, the thing is open, but their, their exhibit's really cool. Now, did I say indoor house or waiting to go into their indoor house? And the camera won't focus on them. But if you look dead middle of the camera, they're there. Here in the African area, for about $7, you could ride a camel. The next section of the zoo to explore is the Asia Quest, and the entrance is spectacular. Can't get a great view, but the first exhibit you see has a Siberian musk deer who just stepped out of shot, and some beautiful cranes. Uh, I imagine they're probably the the largest species of crane because they're very tall. You got one standing up over here. Along with a beautiful waterfall. Like this whole family is hanging out on the, the top of the tree there. And these guys are silver leaf langers. After those guys, you do go into an indoor area. And it's interesting, so you have the different species of tigers Except the statues that have been removed are extinct tigers. Which is kind of sad. It is a little sad. It's a cool way to do it. Yeah. And then you've got a dragon here with like a magical ball. And wild places. Very neat exhibit here for the water monitor. And then if we turn around, it's also a cool exhibit. for the reticulated python. Look at it. So big. Especially like you can tell like where the, like the, dis the digestive stuff stops. Yeah. But yeah, snakes are not my favorite. They're so cool though. He's a very large snake. Next you get to the bats. And also it's nice, this whole area is kind of indoors. Yes. So 
you could cool off. Now this animal over here, I don't know if I've ever seen in a zoo before, and I definitely don't know how to pronounce its name. It's cute though. The Greater Milan Chavotram. But we're gonna go and follow Molly over here where this little guy, he's hanging out underneath the bench. And he's tiny. You see him under there. I hope he's not scared. Maybe that's what the python is looking at. Aww, but he's so cute. Here you can see the sloth bear who is so fluffy. Oh, there's a couple of them in here. Oh, look how cute he is. And he's going to have a drink. Also, in that indoor section we showed off earlier, you can, there's big windows for the sloth bears inside areas. There's also a second one way in the back over here. Now, these guys are cool. One thing I do appreciate here at the Columbus Zoo, they have signs like this that tell you the bear could be indoors or outdoors, and they have this for a lot of their animals where you can see them from either one. So that both shows that they give the animal the access to go wherever they want, and the guess that, hey, it could be over there. We've got a lot of room here for the zoo's elephants, the Asian elephants. Like how you can see this guy bopping along, jamming out to the music in his head. Up, oh, and somebody's coming, somebody's backing up. I think the big guy's backing up there. Yep, with the tusks. And coming to say hello to his friend. Aww. Unfortunately, I didn't turn the camera back on before they went in the house, but this is the red panda enclosure. Now you can sort of see its tail in there. And I, I believe, I follow the zoo on social media, so I think they do have a little baby red panda in there. And baby red pandas don't leave the den for months and months and months. They are adorable too, so uh, if you get the chance to see one, or look at the zoo on social media to see how cute it is. The Asia area does have a bird aviary. Now my favorite bird is this guy, who looks like he's got a little super villain mask on. Here's another rather rare animal to see in a zoo. This is a markhor, which is the world's largest goat. They have really cool horns. Yeah, cool exhibit too. Like I would love to see him like hanging out on one of the uh, the rocks. I don't know. Mm, he's kind of close. Cool. Yeah. So the zoo has two different more tiger exhibits. Uh, one's very large. This one's just an okay size. But we found him in adorable cat pose sleeping against the fence. Next up should be a good one, Australia and the Islands. So one of the first things you see in the Australia and the Islands exhibit is an indoor area that's done up as like a cafe. It's a bit dark, so you can barely see there are two tawny frog mouths in here. And I'm a little disappointed because they, they have the frog mouths, but they also have a kiwi. And I don't think I've ever seen a kiwi in real life, so I'm a little bummed. Now I love these guys. It's a little dark, but right there, that's a wombat. So dead center there, you can see the porcupine. Now I do, uh, it is very dark in here, but the exhibit is really, really nice. It's really well done. And they do some stuff that I really like, like in this fake tree here is a reptile enclosure for a gecko. Now I can't see the gecko, but I love that that's there. Like it's such cool design. It is. And they have- So I just mentioned how I really like the design of that indoor Australia area. Well, when you go out the door, it leaves you not outdoors, but into an indoor bird aviary. You can buy fast if you don't like birds. Yes. The zoo has koalas as well. The gray spot. It's adorably sleeping. Not too surprising, Molly, that they have a really cool kangaroo exhibit in the Australia section. You know what else isn't is surprising? What? A group of kangaroos. It's called a mop. Oh. I can see that. Yeah. And the kangaroos, if they wanted to, they could just hop right onto the path. They do have signs telling you not to pet the kangaroos. But uh, I love how they get that close if the kangaroos wanted to. Cool exhibit here for the Siamangs, as well as the white-handed gibbons. I'm sad because there was a little guy, but he went behind. Oh, there he is. He's very quick. Here you can see the zoo's Komodo dragon. 
laying right there against the glass, and that that is a big Komodo dragon. I bet he doesn't move much. No, but it, he he could go indoors or outdoors. Check out the pelican. There are some storks so and high, turtles. Uh, it's a hybrid between the great white and the Dalmatian color. Cool. Hanging out down there. That's the Asian small clawed otter. There's oh, and there's one in the. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. You see two swimming down there. Three. One has three. Glasses. Oh. Like there's a whole bunch. If you're curious what my favorite type of otter is, it's these guys. Oh no, they're fighting or playing, I'm not sure. Here you can see the zoo's orangutans. Aren't they so cool? They got three of them. I'm sad I missed it on camera, but this guy just kind of slid down the ladder like he was a fireman. I kind of. Then you can see the big guy over here. So one neat thing about the islands exhibit is you can take a tour on the lower level by going on the island's boat ride and it takes you past the orangutans, the gibbons, the otters. The otters. It's only two bucks. I mean, not the most interesting ride, but uh, for two dollars, yeah, I'd it's say it's fun. definitely worth it. And it gives you a unique view. Yeah, I know in years past too, this has been rethemed. Like there's been years this has been a pirate themed boat ride or a dinosaur themed boat ride. Right now it's just a boat ride past animals. The next exhibit up is the Congo Expedition. The first thing that greets you in the Congo area is some black and white Colobus monkeys. And they've got a, a lot of stuff to climb on here. Beautiful sleeping leopard right in front of us, right by the glass. Here's the gorilla area. And the gorillas have tons of stuff to play with. Also, they have three different troops of gorillas. Max group is a troop is like giant. Yeah, but I mean that's a lot of that's like 20 gorillas. Yeah. And it makes sense with that many troops of gorillas that there's a, a big indoor area as well, which is air conditioned. I think I see a little one up there. The Bonobos have a lot of room, but they all seem to be hanging out over there underneath, including what I think is a small one. Yo, that's definitely a small one. Yeah, that's a small one. Here you got a very excited Red River Hawk. Look at that tail. Also, I think we're right by the road. Look at the ears and the tail. He's a very excited. He has a lot of good sniffs. So Molly, the Bonobos, looks like they also have an indoor area complete with a playground slide. Here you can see a mandrel. Obviously the animal that was famously Rafiki in The Lion King. There is also a second leopard in here. Oh, and it's doing cat stuff right by the fence. Look at that animal. Beautiful. And we're really close too. We're probably, I would say, 10 feet away. So this is a real treat here. The okapi is both very close and eating. You can see its big giraffe tongue too as it um, enjoys some hay there. With this being the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, it's time to check out the aquarium stuff here at Discovery Reef. We're now in the aquarium section here. Lots of fish. I love the pink. Yeah. It's like you're in a submarine. Mm -hmm. One side the other. It looks like you got a very large tank over here. No overly large fish in here, at least that I've seen yet. 
but a very pretty tank. And I also love that they have this, where you can just sort of sit and relax and watch, and watch the fish. You do have a small scale shark over there. Looks like there's a larger shark on the bottom, like a bamboo shark. And that's a little bit of the aquarium section. The next section in the aquarium area is Manatee Coast. So Molly, I would say the Manatee Coast area feels much, much more modern and much nicer than the other aquarium area. Yes. I also love how like the big glass windows there looks out onto like the lake right beyond it. Oh, and they got stingrays in here too. Like big stingrays. Look at these guys. And of course the star of the show here is the manatees. Because I'm getting distracted by the stingrays walking right past. <laughs> I wonder if that's like mom and pup. Maybe. Got a couple of, of big manatees in here. This guy looks a little damaged. Hello. Hello. Manatees are, they're just wonderful gentle animals. Had to turn the camera back on because not only is there stingrays, fish, and manatees, there's also a sea turtle in here. Sea turtle in kind of an odd pose. Hanging out right between two posts. So this section of the zoo is the North American Trail with all kinds of North American animals. This very large exhibit here is home to the Mexican gray wolf, which they're both sleeping. It takes a little bit to see them. But you can see one right there. This is a beautiful, beautiful bison or buffalo. Uh, the horns are, it's, it's, it, this guy could be a model buffalo. He could. And I'm glad with those horns, they did, he did not come back here. No, no. <laughs> that one drive through from Safari was something. You do have a couple attractions in the North American area. You've got a train that'll take you around some of the animals. And the tray, only two bucks. Like, that's a really good deal yeah, for a, a pay extra kind of attraction. And you've also got a pony ride. All right, if you couldn't tell by Prairie Dog Molly, where'd the Prairie Dog exhibit? And there he is. Kind of posing majestically for us. Uh, the Prairie Dog exhibit, it is pretty nice. A pretty large size exhibit for yeah. Prairie Dogs. I like how they have... Yeah, but the all clear prairie dog noise. Which I guess like these guys would not have any predators, so it's all clear at all times. Yeah. But our buddy will still stand watch. He's on lookout. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a meerkat thing, but I wonder if the prairie dogs do it as well. I think they are. They do, right? I don't know. It looks like he is. Got a great photo op over here with a giant moose. Molly, it's like we're looking at a statue. Yeah. Except in real life. His ears are moving. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's no antlers. But uh, they're big. Moose are really, really big. Also, they have so much room here. It is the largest living deer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, their enclosure space, gigantic. Here you can see the American black bear. Looks like he's probably scratching his nose behind a rock. I love how he has a canoe. Yeah, I mean, if I could see that bear hanging out in the canoe, canoe like sitting up like people, I'd be so happy. I'm just trying to get his face. There you go. There he is smiling for us. Now, back to the canoe. That would be like the dream shot. Of him in the canoe? Yep, sitting up like people. There you can see some North American river otters. And there's one in the water as well. Uh, a theme I'm seeing here at the Columbus Zoo, Molly, this is like the largest exhibit I've ever seen for an otter. Oh, zoo. yeah. There is so much room here. You can see there's one swimming. He's getting out of the water over there. Always love seeing these guys at zoos. through the door you could see some reindeers which I imagine are very popular during the zoo's Christmas event which we're here in late August and they're already running Christmas lights for so it's probably a good time 
We can see a very sneaky cougar in its little cave. The North American area is home to a bird aviary. We got ducks and ibises and lion birds and a cottage. Oh, I think this duck's probably my favorite. Quack, quack. That's what ducks say. Molly, I believe it's a surprise to nobody that the bald eagle shows up in the North American section of the zoo. Beautiful, too. I'm shocked. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Floating right by there is the American beaver. They're cool. They are so cool. And he's putting on a show for us. Beaver's playing with the beaver. Here's a second view of the buffalo or bison and uh, very, very pretty animals. Uh, what I find interesting too, there are also pronghorns in here as well with the bison. So now let's talk about something that's very unique for the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, and that is attached. They have their own water park called Zumbezi Bay. And it, it, it's no joke, this is a full-size, legit, very, very modern water park. And I quite enjoyed it. I'm not the biggest water park person, but I had a lot of fun here at Zumbezi Bay. They have a, a good selection of slide. I think it was like probably five or six slide towers with very modern stuff. They have a very nice lazy river as well that goes through the middle of the park with different places you could get on and get off. There's also some wave elements to their lazy river that made it a little bit more, a little bit more thrilling, a little bit more adventurous than some. They've got a water slide that sort of does uphill downhill elements, a water slide with a big wave wall on it. So again, these are very legitimate state-of-the-art water slides. Uh, my favorite slide tower, I believe, was this one here, which has a tornado slide, which is that big giant funnel. And then the other water slide, that orange one, well, that's when you could pick your own music to go down, which is very unique. I've never seen something like that before. And there's like eight different tracks and music that blasts in and also like some lighting effects in there as well. Other fun stuff here, it's a really good water park for kids. They have multiple kids areas, uh, including this wonderful one with this giant octopus and tipping bucket. There's also one I didn't film for smaller kids as well. But for me, I would say probably the highlight, easily the highlight, possibly the highlight of any water park ever, is Crocktail Creek featuring the sandbar, which is 21 and up only to get in here. And it is a swim up bar that also has a lazy river with cup holders in the tubes. So you could just go around this lazy river with no kids annoying you with your adult beverage. And it is like the most relaxing thing in the world. I find it a crime that we have five water parks here in Orlando and none of them have something like this. Every water park should be built with one of those. But if you're going to the, the zoo, might as well check out Zumbezi Bay if the, uh, the weather is nice for you because it was a pretty good time. Welcome by animatronic guy to the reptile house. Well, I, I love that. That's really cool. So here is that reptile house. Pretty cool with like the snake bones. You got lots of snakes and geckos and things like that. Oh, and look at the little tiny turtles. They are super tiny. So neat. Um, and this is a good time. We're here, unfortunately, right before closing, but uh, it's when I enjoy exhibits like this when they're not crowded. Like this kind of thing with a lot of people in it. Can you just mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't see the exhibits. Yeah. You can't see that snake. You know, I don't mind not seeing that snake. Check out the Mata Mata turtle there. He's turned around on us, but get a shot of his friend sleeping. Those are cool turtles. Molly, you normally like snakes a lot more than I do. I just think they're fascinating creatures. I would never want to run across them in the wild. But I like his pose out of the box. In the box. All right, Molly, what kind of snake is this terrifying being? Uh, type of python. And I don't know if that's one or two. I don't know, it is a python, so. It is like perfectly coiled up like a garden hose. You do have a really cool wet forest area as well. Including this guy is very interesting. It's a giant river turtle. I believe it's the fly river turtle? I believe so. But, but there's four or five yeah. turtles on there. But it is really big. No, 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 no. This is the striped, narrow-headed, soft-shell turtle. 
to weigh over 400 pounds. But his friend is way more active. That's cool. That's, a, that's an animal I've never seen in a zoo before. Most of the time when you see turtles that size, you see the sea turtle, or you see the, the Galapagos or the Aladero, al Alabra. I think this guy is your fly turtle. Yeah, that, that, I think so too. Because he has a big snap. Mm-hmm. They have a large petting zoo and barn sponsored by Bob Evans. Hey Molly, what do you think we find in the chicken coop? Um, chickens? Yeah, you guessed correctly. Oh, look at me, I'm in Peloton. So they have a petting zoo and a whole bunch of goats. Goats here. Goats eating. Lots of goats. They also have cows. Some cow here. The that cow has a friend. So we're visiting at the end of August in the middle of the week. So unfortunately the ride section is not open, but they do have a variety of rides. They're all kind of a pay extra kind of thing. But you can see like a swinging ship, a really nice looking log flume. Yeah, that is. And there is a wooden roller coaster here as well. So a little bit of a bummer. A reason to come back. I know. And uh, I'm not sure what that is, but it looks like the old Illuminations globe. <laughs> uh, hey Molly, what time is it? Beer 30. Beer 30, drinking a big old beer. It's a, a brewery I've never heard of, Market Garden and the Prosperity Wheat Beer. And uh, Molly's also enjoying a corn dog. Yeah. Uh, not, obviously not the, the cheapest of beers, uh, 1075. You do get a, uh, a souvenir cup, but it goes to the animals, so I don't feel bad. And it's in the loose money anyway. <laughs> One thing I think is really nice is that the zoo runs a tram from the entry village over towards like the African and polar bear areas. Beer 30 continues here as they got an IPA from Columbus Brewing Company. And I love when zoos or theme parks do stuff like this where they bring like the local craft brewing company. Molly, it's just like we're back in Florida. So we're here at the American Alligator Exhibit. I hey. thought you meant he was lazing around like I like to do on my days off. Oh, well right now I'm only working like two days a week. So I feel like I have a lot in common with this alligator. <laughs> here you can see the Humboldt penguin, which is a South American penguin. In most zoos, when you see a warm weather penguin, generally they're African penguins. Some zoos do have humboats, but they're a little bit rarer to see. Unfortunately, none of them are swimming right now, but I do like their, uh, oh, one swimming. They're still cute. He wanted to prove me wrong by, by chopping in the pool. He was already in the water. Oh, he's already in the water? Yeah. Well, he wanted to swim over to make sure like, <laughs> hey, guy. Catch me on camera. Mm -hmm. I love their, uh, their misters. Yeah. The zoo does have a carousel, but unlike a lot of zoos, it has an ancient carousel from 1914, um, which apparently ran at Wyandotte Lake recently and then moved here in 2000. So uh, normally you see zoos with like kind of the plasticky carousel with a lot of like endangered species on it, but this is the uh, over a hundred year old real deal carousel. Now, if you have kids, they'll probably love this. Look at this bug-themed playground. So in the aquarium section, you do have a really cool kids splash playground area and a 4D theater. We didn't have time to go to the 4D theater today, but they played two different movies and it's five bucks to get in. I would have gone to see something called Bear and Squirrel 4D. <laughs> well, four hours and 15 minutes later, that brings us to the end of our time here at the Columbus Zoo. And that was barely enough. Yes. Um, and, and that includes like none of like the fairground rides were close, so we didn't get to go on the roller coasters or the log flume, go in the 4D movie. Um, based we on the. We kind of sped through a couple of Yeah. Of it. And they were, they're not doing any keeper talks or shows right now based on the ongoing global health situation. But I love this zoo. I, I came in with high expectations and they, they, they surpassed it. Um, no, I agree. It was it's a very, very good zoo. It's gigantic. Mm -hmm. You could spend so many times here. And I think it's, it's easier to name the animals the zoo does not have as opposed to all those, the animals that I saw today. Yeah. I, I would say, I think, out of all the zoos I've been to in my life, this probably ranks number two. I think San Diego beats it by just a little bit. Yeah. 
but I, I could see the argument either way. I agree. What was uh, your favorite animal? Oh, I think the polar bears. Being that close to the polar bears, having them being active, and um, seeing the little guy, the nine-month-old, they're eating a fish. But the grizzly bears was really cool too. Yes. And they're like pose. Uh, the capybaras swimming, the little capybaras. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's just tremendous. Uh, if you're anywhere near here, it's not that much to get in. One major difference between here and San Diego is this one is less than half the price. Yes, it's about, more affordable, especially about, for a big family. About $22 to get into. Um, I can't wait. I'm definitely like, I'm probably not going to go two or three years before I visit the zoo again because I enjoyed it that much. Guys, if you have any questions about visiting the Columbus Zoo, let us know in the comments section below. We'll do our best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys didn't watch videos like this, we can go on 24 hours adventures to Ohio to go see some, some polar bears and copies and all sorts of wonderful things that we saw today. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much and we'll see you all next time.